Welcome to sunny, glamorous and beautiful Monaco. We're here for the occasion of the Monaco Historic Grand Prix. It happens every two years. There's some fabulous cars racing this weekend. And here we are at Le Sport Inn, the very venue where they have the driver's presentation after the Formula One. The roof's open, the sun's shining, the cars are lined up, people are coming and looking at the cars and we're very excited about the sale. Coming up later in the show, we have What A Lot, our special feature where our expert car specialists tell us about their favourite cars in the auction. We also have an interview with Max Girardo, our star auctioneer. During the auction, we'll have our live Twitter feed and Peter Haynes will be on hand to answer any tweets that you have. But first, we're going to meet our expert commentators who are going to tell us all about the auction and the buzz that is Monaco. I'm here with Annette Abachi, German car specialist for RM Auctions, who also runs our German operation, and Donald Hello. Osborne, who is a journalist, a car commentator, valuer, and a motoring specialist. We're here for the weekend of the Monaco Historic Grand Prix, and um, we have a, a little auction. I think it's amazing, Peter, uh, what RM has accomplished here. RM always does a wonderful job setting up for sales wherever you go around the world. And this is my first trip to Monaco, so this is an amazing uh, experience for me, and it's just terrific. That's good. And uh, one thing I'd like to ask you on that topic, really, Donald, this reminds me a bit more of a U.S. sale. Arizona, Amelia, Monterey, we have the hotel, the bars. People, it's a, it's a destination. They can hang out, meet their friends for dinner, and come back and buy a car. Exactly. It's sort of a complete um, resort, spa, car experience. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. And very nicely tied into the Monaco Grand Prix, historic, so uh, brilliant, beautiful, and I love the venue. I mean, if you just look outside, it's amazing, huh? Really feel like very like flamboyant, beautiful. You walk into the garage, you see those fantastically presented racing cars. I love it. I just love it. Well, what you think? definitely get a feeling that you are in Monaco in this venue. Yeah. You look out at the harbor, you see the wonderful yachts, you can hear the, uh, the historic Grand Prix cars practicing in the distance, and as Annette said, it's just sort of the glamour, the, the, the dash and the glamour of Monaco. Uh, I was speaking with someone today walking through the preview, and they said, wow, have you ever seen a garage like this? You know, <laughs> amazing, fully carpeted and beautifully lit, and I said, well, RM does a great job, but we are in Monaco, so actually there might be one or two other garages in this town that are this nice with some cars that might true. be this nice as well. Yeah, yeah that's so uh, you're, you're, you're probably right there, Donald. I think what the other great thing about being in Monaco, the people almost as beautiful as the cars we're offering. Yeah, that's true, especially is that if I may chip in the ladies. I don't know if you actually noticed that, but beautifully dressed, really well groomed. It's just the delight. And that's in the afternoon. <laughs> just wait until the evening. Yeah. Well, I think some yeah. of those ladies were almost as expensive as these cars. Yeah, probably you're right on this one as well, Peter. <laughs> Not sure if you can put a bit on that. <laughs> <laughs> and so how about those yachts in the harbor? Mo moving on. Yes. <laughs> but look, I think the, these cars are about that era, the golden era, the Dolce Vita, Monaco, Saint-Tropez, the Riviera, the Grand Corniche. Grace Kelly, Audrey Hepburn, Cary Grant. This really sort of brings it all together, what these cars are about. And then, of course, the great racing drivers of that era. It's a thrill to be able to see some of these racing cars that have raced on these streets in Monaco a scant few kilometers from where we're sitting right now and to see them sitting here right next to you and then to, to see those personalities here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think you really hit it. I think that's... That's the nitty gritty. It's like, you know, it's the buzz. It's the, you can, I don't know, but you can really feel it. You, it's, it's a buzz, it's a, it's a certain feeling. You come here and you can just say, ooh, something is different here. 
that's that I don't know if it's you... a shopping experience in a sense I think what Exciting this is about shopping experience. Well, it's the sunshine I mean I, I don't know if you experienced it Annette in terms of consigning cars to this auction people were enthusiastic yeah, they're enthusiastic true. about consigning Very to all of our auctions yeah. of course oh my god but they can't come to Monaco come to April. Monaco yeah, it's true have a weekend they'll bring their wife or their girlfriend their cars here and people I think will yes. make a couple of extra bids You're when right, the sun's shining they're in a good yeah. mood yeah. Again, because Monaco is a perfect frame for all these cars. That's, you can picture these yeah. cars gliding up to the casino and, and driving uh, down by the swimming pool and, and driving all through town because it just gives that added bit of glamour. So say, well, of course, that car's got to be worth another 10, 15,000 euro because, my God, look at how it looks here in Monaco. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a shop window and it, it's like shopping on Bond Street or in Beverly Hills. It's creating that atmosphere, that environment that people feel good about spending their hard earned money. Coming up next, we'll be going over to some of our experts in our special feature, What A Lot. And then we'll be hearing from our auctioneer and uh, European Managing Director, Max Girardo. I am sitting in my favorite Porsche of the sale. This is a Porsche 356 Carrera Speedster. The Porsche 356 was the first mass production car produced. However, this particular model is very, very special. It is a Carrera Speedster. The Carrera model was named after the heroic victory in the 1954 Carrera Panamericana road race, where Carrera cars finished first and second. These cars were incredibly high profile. Two well-known owners must have been James Dean and Steve McQueen, the kings of cool. This car is the epitome of California in the 1950s, and that's why I adore it so much. This Bentley Continental R-Type from 1954 is my favorite car in the sale. After the war, it was important for Bentley to reclaim their sporting heritage using their latest chassis called the R-Type. And they went a step further and created the Continental, um, which was lighter and faster than any other Bentley. In fact, it was the fastest four-seat production car available in the world in its day, and also the most expensive production car. Um, they were owned by captains of industry, heads of state, uh, titans of Hollywood, etc. There were 208 built, all out of aluminum bodies. Of those 208, 15 had extra special one-off coachwork. This car has French bodywork by the coach builder Frenet. It's one of three coupes that Frenet built, and the only one of those three with left-hand drive and center shift manual gearbox. So for me personally, it ticks all my boxes. It's big, it's black, and it's fast, also rare. I'm a car historian and I've chosen this car, the Alfa Romeo Tipo 33, because it's got a really interesting race history. The car is presented here today in the same livery as it wore at the 1968 Nürburgring 1000 kilometers, as can be seen from the period photograph behind the car. The race is notoriously difficult and the car finished 10th overall with Nino Vaccarella and Herbert Schultz driving. It looks truly stunning and was built as a no compromise racing car with a double overhead cam V8 engine. For me, this car is amazing. Monaco. Yeah. How does it feel to be back here third year for our auction? Yeah, it's great to be back. Probably one of my uh, favorite venues, favorite uh, events, and one of my favorite places to be uh, auctioneering. But what about the cars? We're here in front of some fabulous Ferraris and the Maserati in La Sporting, roofs open, sun shining. How are you feeling? I'm feeling very positive, very good. There's a really good buzz around the, uh, around the set. Yeah, there's a lot of people coming in from all over the world. Yeah. So it's good to see so many uh, familiar faces and new faces in Monaco yeah, as well. I've seen, seen a lot of people here. And uh, the new venue? 
You pleased? New venue couldn't have worked out better. I mean, this open roof here at the Sporting, yeah. the sun is out. I can hear the cars racing in the background. I don't think we could really ask for a better setting to sell some classic cars. And we'll be up here on the rostrum overlooking the bay, the harbour, the yachts. Fabulous. And so what about the uh, cars? Have you got a favourite car of the auction? Oh, you know, Pisa. Ferraris are really my, uh, my thing. It's what I prefer. And I have to say that to me that the, fifth, the 250 PF Spider Series 1 is, is one of the... One of my favorites, you yeah. know, it's that 50s styling Ferrari, that 12 cylinder engine. I was driving it just a couple of weeks ago and it's so oh, lovely to drive. Well, it's, it's got the same chassis as the Tour de France that you've been racing at Goodwood <laughs> so successfully. Very, very well informed, absolutely. That's why it's so, uh, so great to drive. Yet it's got those 50s look. There's some fabulous cars. We've got the Brabham in the garage, you the Brabham, like the Brabham BT20. I love it. It's that great era pre wing, wide wheels, and I just would love to experience driving that around Monaco. And that car won here in Monaco in 1967. There are some, I was going to say, some great. Great shots of it coming round, sort of the back sliding out. Very interesting, Max, that people seem to now understand what type of cars sell best in Monaco, and I think the collection that we have on sale this evening reflects that. What I, do you think? I, it's a selection that really fits in with the venue and fits in with the clientele that's uh, that's here. So, uh, so I think this is the best best suited cars we could have for the Monaco auction. No, I think people are now starting to really sort of look at the auctions very carefully and think what car would sell best there. Think of the Brabham that you just mentioned, the yeah. Monaco winner. There is no better place Absolutely. to sell the Grand Monaco Grand Prix winning Brabham than right here in Monaco. So Max, are you ready for the sale this evening? I Excited? Don't. Couldn't feel uh, couldn't feel readier. There's a real buzz building up. There's lots of people here. People keep coming in. Bidder regis registration is uh, is really busy. So it's great to see there's so much uh, so much interest. I mean, I think there's just a special. There's always that special energy in yeah, Monaco. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Something 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 for everyone and lots of great people here. Well, let's hope we're celebrating tomorrow. The new venue. I'm really impressed. It's not just somewhere to come and look at cars and then go away and have lunch. It's, it's become like more like an American cell. I would call it the RM Resort. We've got the hotel, restaurants, the pool, and of course the cars. What Absolutely. Do you think? That's probably why you've got so many people coming here. There's, there's, you could actually spend, here, spend all day here without, uh, without moving. Well, thanks for your time, Max. It's very, very busy. I'm looking forward to being on the rostrum with you later. You go and polish your gavel and I'll go and read the catalogue. <laughs>Obviously, there are many, many, many enthusiasts here who are into racing as opposed to the concours set mm -hmm. here in Monaco this weekend. And you have open wheel enthusiasts as well as sports car enthusiasts, even though obviously sports cars are not really the Monaco feature. But you still have those people that are interested in that kind of performance car and cars with history. Because people who are interested in Monaco and interested in the Monaco Historique and in the Monaco Grand Prix right. are people who are, mm. who are historically minded. Mm. You know, they sort of like that idea of heritage. Yeah. And I think that that's the kind of thing that you really see in all of the cars here, whether they be uh, competition cars or road cars. And certainly, as, as Annette said, about the, uh, the modern supercars. I think as well, in this particular selection, we do have a lot of cars from the 50s and 60s. Cars that are very drivable as both everyday and as weekend pleasure cars to go off to Saint-Tropez uh, for the day and sit in the sunshine. And I think, that is that indicative of the type of audience that we would get here, in your opinion? I mean, you mentioned before the race, and they're drivers here, compared to perhaps people who prefer to show their cars. Correct. And uh, everyone, when they're here in Monaco, um, I think we were all talking about this before, the spirit of, of Grace Kelly and Audrey Hepburn and all of that, that sort of, that, that elegant 50s and 60s uh, carefree uh, heiress and playboy lifestyle. And if I may throw in, there come the two riverboats in as well. I yeah. mean, that fits in brilliantly into the whole feel of the Monaco um, uh, experience. Mm -hmm. We've got the, uh, the Vespa. 
the same Vespa or the same model that um, was used in Roman Holiday, the two seats, and we can just all see Audrey Hepburn as the princess running around on the back of that with uh, Gregory Peck. What a great image. But it also has that bit of fun and sort of raffish element. So you get everything from the little Cinquecento uh, uh, Vetrifici, little very, very plain, low-spec Cinquecento, to you know, the most fabulous big Ferrari. Yeah. You know, it, that is Monica. Well, I think, I think it's that eclectic taste as well that we see from, from buyers today. Somebody may go and come here and buy the 250 GT Pininfarina Cabriolet for five or six million euros, and then that same person may buy the Cinquecento in the same auction. And I think that just summarizes the eclectic nature of our clients. I agree. I think we have covered with the selection of cars we are offering here quite the quite everything. So we the have the spectrum. race cars, the full spectrum, we have the beautiful Bentley Continental with a Franai body, we have the little Fiat uh, Abarth, that's a lovely car. So it's brilliant. I love it. I really love it. And I think we got it on the dot. I would say, and I think we've, we've discussed this before, that the theme, if there can be a theme in this very eclectic collection, it's about driving. All of these cars are cars for enthusiasts who want to get behind the wheel and drive and use their cars. Well, that brings me to a, a, what I think is quite an interesting point. We, we all go to shows, exhibitions, auctions, and often people are saying, well, the market's moving very quickly. Cars seem to be going up in price quite quickly. But what I find it particularly interesting and, and reassuring in many respects is that people are still buying these cars for the events. The events are getting better whether it's a concours, whether it's a rally, whether it's a private tour, or whether it's a race meeting, they're growing every year. The calendar's full, and people are buying these cars specifically for those events. They must be enthusiasts buying them, new enthusiasts. Correct, I mean, I hear from event organizers all the time that events are more fully subscribed than ever before. It's more difficult to get into the top level events than it has been before. And while there's a lot of talk about pure investors entering mm. the market and investment funds, and which has happened, um, I don't think that it is fundamentally a market that is being driven by those funds. Given the size of the collector car market, you would have to have a fund of at least a billion dollars before you could even make a dent into the market in a particular model. Mm. And I don't think any of the funds have gotten to that size yet, A. And B, what we also see in the market, while RM and, and is, is setting records with, with some models, you also see in the same model that another example of that will sell for 15 or 20 percent less mm. because enthusiasts say these are the attributes of value that make this particular example worth this record price and this one is very nice but it should be worth this price and I think that the market is really really telling people what the cars really intrinsically should bring. Yeah, and, it's a and at the end of the day, the market is way more transparent than it was before. That helps as well to make actually decisions like, uh, how do you say this, intelligence decisions on what exactly do you want to do. Mm. And I think it shows. It shows in the results, it shows in the prices, and it shows in the cars that make big money. That's the reason, one of the reasons why. Thank you, Annette. That's a very good point. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you. No uh, we're going to go across now to Peter Haynes, who's going to tell us all about how you can follow the auction live. Thank you, Peter. Yes, I'm here to talk you through all of the action live as it unfolds through the wonder of all this modern technology we have at our disposal. You can feel a part of this auction from the comfort of your own home. So please do stay on rmauctions.com, watch us on the live feed and tweet us on RM Auctions, at RM Auctions, use the hashtag RM Monaco, and we will field your questions, and we will do our best to reply to as many of them as we can. And uh, the most interesting uh, questions that come in, the ones that perhaps uh, make us smile or intrigue us the most, we will uh, send you a little thank you by sending you a free catalogue in the post. Uh, so the three best questions uh, will win that prize and you can look forward to receiving that soon. Please do stay in touch, keep the questions coming in and we will do our best to answer them. Thank you very much.
highlight of the day is this beautiful 1955 Lancia B24S America Spider. This was at a time the top of the line car with a wonderful six cylinder engine with two Weber carburetors. It was really, really the car to have. It was produced with a 240 units only for the American market. The bodywork on this car comes from Pininfarina, a very well known coach builder at its time and as you can see the car has very clean lines so there are no door handles for example so it's very subtle very smooth and I think it looks a million. I think this car is one of the most glamorous cars of the sale. It's painted white, red leather interior, open, beautiful lines. It's offered at no reserve so I can see you driving away in this car in beautiful Monaco. I should actually start and drive away in it. Just put some ramps there. I love this car. I'm really fond of it. And I can see myself driving around in Monaco with that. This is the car that makes my heart beat faster. It's a 275 GTB Competizione. Do you think it's a simple 275? It's much more than that. So what makes the difference with a standard 275? I will tell you. That car has a specific chassis, lighter and, and, and stiffer. Has a competition engine. Fantastic dry sump, 280 horsepower, a lightweight aluminium body, which is wider than a standard car. And that car is probably the ultimate evolution of a GT front engine Ferrari of the 60s. I've got a short story about that model. A friend of mine has two ultimate Ferraris, a 275 GTP competition, like this, like this one, and a short wheelbase, 215. He raced both of them, and in spa from Corchon, he's six seconds faster with that car, and you know what, for half of the price of the short wheelbase. Having been lightly raced in period, that car is probably the most original 275 GTB competition still in existence. And looking at the body, the shape, it's just the car I love here. So welcome back, uh, Donald and uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the highlights of the auction. I thought you'd never ask, Peter, because <laughs> here in Monaco, <laughs> one of the highlights, it may certainly not be the most expensive car sold, but without a doubt, the Lancia D50 recreation. What says Monaco more than yeah. the type of car that Ascari took his famous leap into the harbor in? Yeah. in 1955 That's yeah. true. and uh, I love launches and launches are very very important collectors have really started to to take a real close look at launches I know that Aneta loves uh, one of the launches here in the sale it's true um, but the D50 is such an incredibly evocative car and the idea that there are only two original D50s left in the world one in the Fiat collection and the other at the Biscaretti Museum yep. in Turin yep. and when this project came about to to recreate these cars based around five original D50 V8 engines, it was brilliant. And the fact that it was executed so incredibly well and that these leading collectors and enthusiasts in the world purchase these cars and get a chance to actually run them in FIA historic competition is fantastic. It's like yeah. watching, literally watching a ghost come to life before your eyes. And the sound those cars make yeah. is amazing. Well, that yeah, to me is one of the I couldn't agree with you more, Donald. I think Again, coming back to the fact that we are in Monaco, it's the perfect place to present it. Technology-wise, those cars were so interesting with the fuel tanks on the side to keep the weight balance distributed evenly as the fuel load changed. And what I really like about that car is, if you look at, say, a 250F Maserati, they made, Cameron Miller, they made cars, they're a lot less valuable than the original 250Fs. Mm. You have a choice as a collector or someone who wants to go racing. You can have a Cameron Miller, take it racing. You can have an original 250F and take it racing and risk a lot more money. The Lancia D50, you just can't buy one. So if you want to race one, that's your option. And what a wonderful thing it is. It's original mechanical running gear. And they're executed, they're tool room copies. Absolutely. There were recreations and there are tool room copies and that is just beautifully executed. Yeah, speaking about another car, which is one of my favorites and that again, not the one of the most valuable cars, it's pre-war, of course, me being me, it's the Bugatti Type 35B. <laughs> Eight cylinder, supercharged, really, really beautifully presented and I'm in love with that car and I think it if you want to go racing, vintage racing, I think this is one of the opportunities that cannot be missed to go and bid on that car. Again, I think 
of uh, Type 35B Bugatti, people overlook. They look at the age of the car, but they overlook the performance of those Thank cars. Thank you. They, they Thank accelerate you. like modern supercars, and the, the experience is so raw when you drive them. Not that I've had a great deal of experience of it, but it really is a different type of experience. And one of the things that, that really strikes me is the fact that the men and women who drove these cars when they were new were truly brave people. Yeah. These cars were incredibly fast. However, they didn't have the brakes that we have now in the cars that can go that fast. So you had to A, plan ahead, and B, really know what you were doing. And while you're driving around the streets of Monaco without Armco, with actual curbs yeah. uh, on the side and telephone poles and all the rest. True, telephone <laughs> poles, I forgot about that, true. Those mm. are the cars of heroes. Well, we can't get away without talking about some of our our real feature cars, the, 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 the 450S Maserati, the 250GT Pininfarina Series 1 Coupe, and of course the 275GTBC, the out-and-out competition-bred 275 variation. One of only 12, a very, very special car indeed. What all three of those cars have in common, what all blue-chip cars have in common, is not only historical importance and uh, technological importance, but beauty. Each one of those cars is incredibly beautiful and for their purpose. The, the 450S has got to be one of the most beautiful performance competition cars ever, ever, ever drawn. That, and especially the 275 GTB, also is one of those cars that every schoolboy and probably schoolgirl, I have to be correct here, if you were just <laughs> going to draw a sports car and you've never seen one before, you would draw that shape. I mean, that incredible Pininfarina shape that Scaglietti uh, realized is just one of the most pure shapes for, for a sports car. It just looks powerful, the, the, the rounded haunches and the yeah. long hood and that sloping greenhouse is just amazingly apt for exactly what the car has got to do. Yeah, yeah. And while there are 275 GTBs and there are 275 GTBs, this is a 275 GTB Competizione alloy car, unbelievably fast, unbelievably rare. Well, those are all valid choices, very, very interesting. Let's see if we can uh, set some new records this evening. Uh, Annette, thank you very much. My pleasure. For taking the time. And Donald, as always, thank you for joining us. Indeed, Peter. Great, great. pleasure. I hope this has given you a better idea of what's happening here in Monaco, the atmosphere, the buzz and the excitement that's building. Please do tweet us any questions that you may have and do keep watching for live coverage of the auction. <laughs>